Hello everybody, welcome back to another Cavalier Estate video. As you can see, the garden's way overgrown, it looks like it's about to rain. Um, but instead, we're going to be doing um, something a little bit different, something a little bit more modern, and doing a basic service on my BW Sat, which is made in 2014. I know, way too new for me, right? Um, so yeah, cue the intro. First order of the day is we're going to take off the splash guard that's underneath or the bottom engine tray as some people like to call it underneath the engine. Um, these are Torx bits, so Torx 20, um, to undo the little screws under there. Now some of these are actually getting a little bit rusty now um, and the speed clips that actually that these uh, little screws screw into are actually starting to be quite rusty and falling apart. There's one missing there that did disintegrate on me last year. So what we got, to, what we're going to do this year is we're going to replace that one. Bought some new ones off eBay. I think I just um, searched for um, Volkswagen um, under tray uh, speed clips, and you can actually find. Um, thankfully, there's like a little kit on there where they do a full set of the speed clips and the screws um, as well which is quite handy as you can see some of them are okay because um, I've been moving them around and, uh, and greasing them so there's four So there's six of these all together of the, uh, what did I say, they were T20, TX20, something like that. Really organised bit of YouTubing that is. So this is actually the uh, third year that I've been servicing my own car and the idea of this video really is to um, just show people that they can do it themselves I mean especially in these days where energy prices are so high and everything I just want to show that doing a simple service um, doesn't have to cost you the earth really um, right I'm just gonna swap over right so there's six um, TX20s and now there's three what size is this TX45 these are just cheap cheap ones I got off eBay might have been off the uh, stool somewhere on um, on an auto jumble maybe. But there's three of these. These you won't have trouble with because they are actually proper bolts going into aluminium. As you can see there. And as you can see, because I'm so organised, I've brought out my magnetic tray. No. I've placed the axle stands on um, what they call the console bushes. While you're under here, it's worth just checking the rubber on those because they are one of the weak points on the, on the B7 Passat. 
quite easy to get hold off of eBay, bit expensive. They're about, if I remember rightly, they were £100 a pair. It's about 50 quid each. Just replaced both of them. Again, a really easy job to do. And they come with um, a new set of bolts because they are stretch, stretch bolts or torque to yield bolts, whatever you want to call them. So the under tray just slips out from there. You've got, um, let's, let's put it out actually. So you've got these little tabs here that, um, that sort of uh, lock into these here. So just push up a little bit on either side and then just simply push away from yourself and, and off that comes. Look at all the dirt that catches. Right, magnetic tray acquired. Um, got the oil patch can here. Uh, we're going to need for this uh, oil sump drain plug is a 19 millimeter. Make sure you're in the loosening direction. The last thing you want to do is over tighten this. I mean, I don't normally tighten them up very tight. <clears throat> so that's loosened off now. Now, um, it's a bit controversial as whether you should um, drain the oil while it's hot or if you do it while it's cold. Um, I get the hot, it's uh, so it flows better and it brings out all the rubbish with it. Now, let's see if I could do this without spilling any. Mm. That was almost professional. Um, I don't know really, this is kind of the first time I've done it cold really and that's purely because I haven't been out in it today. What I have done in the past is, uh, is giving it a, a drive up the road, get it up to temperature, um, come back, get set up and then it's sort of cool enough that it's not going to hurt you but it's still hot enough that um, it will drag all the stuff out with it. With these modern thinner oils I really don't think it matters all that much nowadays. Um, so yeah we'll just let that drain. So um, I forgot to say we haven't, we're going to change the oil filter, um, the air filter, pollen filter and the fuel filter. Um, fuel filter I only tend to do every couple of years and to be honest with you I very much doubt that it needed doing even the last time I've done it and when we have a look at it today I highly doubt that um, it would need doing um, not visually anyway um, so yeah we're gonna let that drain for a minute while it's doing that we're gonna have a look at taking the oil, oil filter out right so the oil filter lives just under here under this um, engine tray these then engine trays, engine covers. Mm. So these just simply pop off. You've got four uh, rubber bungs that, that locate onto these little all um, joints for lack of a better word. So that comes off of there. Let's put that to one side. Um, and what I've done in the past is I've took this bracket off and that gives you and undo these two pipes here and that gives you plenty of room um, although it doesn't look it looks pretty tight which it, I suppose it is really um, but it does give you enough room to get that oil filter out just right whilst you're draining the oil you can just uh, knock out your um, dipstick tube slightly to uh, allow the air in um, or even undo the oil filler I've never found a need to do that if I'm honest um, not in all of the cars that I've ever worked on um, I think you know with the thinner oils and the, or even if the oil's hot there's no need for it um, it's probably better when you're pouring it in um, so it doesn't you don't have the air coming out of the same hole uh, but anyway let's, let's get on with removing this bracket um, so this is a TX30 um, bolt so it's again not very tight because it's only going into plastic with uh, a brass metal insert if I remember rightly. So yeah, undo that and just so as we don't lose it. Apologies for the trains by the way. So 
all as I do is literally just move that over to one side and it gives you plenty of room for our oil filters. This is a 32 millimeter socket. It's a 12 point, which is a bit, you know, would be better if I used a six point really. Again, these are not very tight. You're only really fighting against the rubber seal. So the first few threads will be fairly tight and then it gets quite, really quite easy. At this point, this is probably where you're gonna need plenty of paper tissue, which is gonna, the wind's gonna blow everywhere in our faces probably. So that's loose. I'm listening, Rich. So as you can see that's loose and now I'm just going to very gently pull it out. Now it's a little bit tight around these pipes here but it does come after moving a couple of bits out of the way and there's our oil filter. And I've not even made a mess. Right. Okay so um, I'm going to put the sump plug back in now, now that it's finished draining as you can see. Um, so I've got some rag here and some brake cleaner in case we need it. So, whoops. What I like to do is just give the sump plug a, a little bit of a wipe down, make sure it's all okay. I've never replaced that crush seal ever and I've not had it leak. As you can see on the engine tray when I took it out earlier, there's been no signs of leak. Now that I've thrown it all over the floor everywhere, we give that a bit of a squirt with um, just some uh, brake cleaner. And what we're going to do, we're going to start putting it back in. Give the uh, give any drips a little wipe off. And because I'm really good at this, I've forgotten my ratchet. <coughs> so all I do to tighten these up, that's, um, that's pretty much hand tight in a minute. So just give it a little bit of a tweak. Nothing too major. It's only to stop it oil at the end of the day. And if it does have a little bit of a leak, which we'll check for in a little while, um yeah we'll make sure that uh we can always tweak it up afterwards next we're going to start taking off these things these um o-rings the oil filter on these just simply pulls out give it slight side, side to side movement and it pulls out relatively easy with a little bit of force you know um, go and get a little screwdriver. I said before, have plenty of tissue around you. Um, so first of all we're going to remove, I think to be honest with you, these seals can be used again. Because um, they're not, it's not like they're taken in and out all the time. So there's one little seal and all I'm doing is just getting the screwdriver in there. There's plenty of room in the gap there. Just try and entice the seal over the um, over the plastic. You're better off using a pick, and then once you get it to roll, yeah. see what I mean about tissue. There we go. I'll pull that off, and now we've got this nice big one on the end here, and that's pretty much the same. Got a little bit more leeway with that pull it up and over and that's all three seals out when you buy certainly this Bosch branded filter which is I quite like using Bosch stuff um, I think it's one of the better value well value versus um, having using decent parts and that 
um, and it comes with the seals as well so it comes with all three which are in um, the little bag in there so just use a bit of old oil just give it a little bit of a lubrication um, just helps it go on easier and when you do put it back in the housing it'll uh, it should go into the housing that little bit better and not snag on anything and cause it to tear so just uh, push that down until it sits in the groove there and that's all you need to do with that one there's my two other seals you got two different size seals as you can see really well with my black gloves black on black <laughs> um, I usually like to put the uh, the bigger one on first um, so again a little bit of oil there's probably enough oil residue oil on here to lubricate these but as you can see I'll just simply roll up that um, little ramp thing up there and then just roll that round and it will slot in place. Same with the small one, only this time at the little end. And we, again, we're just, uh, if we can, roll that round. They are a little bit tighter, these ones. Screwdriver, I think, will need to be employed for this. Once you get one bit down in the groove, it, it can just, <coughs> excuse me, I think it's time for another cup of tea. Um, <laughs> we could just simply push that down and as you can see, they sit quite loosely in their little grooves there as, as I said before. Um, so now all we really need to do is just uh, make sure it's nice and clean, make sure there's no debris on there because we've been messing around with them. Just give it a general wipe off. Particularly the top, because once it's in the car, it's not going to be so easy to get to. Might be worth changing the gloves over, to be honest. Um, last but not the least, we'll, um, we'll put this oil filter back on. These are directional, so um, all the the print on the top there with the model number, the part number, and everything will go towards the top, and that just clicks in like that. And you don't have to push it very hard. You hear it click and that's in. So now we're going to screw that back in place. So before we do that, we'll just make sure it's nice and clean around the housing there. Make sure there's no debris or anything that's gone in there. Doesn't look like there is. something I like to do again is it really necessary not really does it make me feel better yes it does <laughs> right gloves are chained and again ugh. paper towel just make sure it's nice and clean on the top there because uh, once it's in here Going to be quite difficult to get onto it. So move this pipe out of the way, move this wiring harness slightly out of the way, and then it should drop into place eventually. There we go. You do have to get it slightly lined up and drop your tools everywhere. So Start tightening that up by hand. So again, I hate doing these because these always feel tighter than when they're undoing, which is why I like to oil the seals a little bit. Right, so that's that's starting to seat now. These um, if you wanted to do these up by torque, you can. They're 25 newton meters. At the end of the day, as I said before, you're only really 
tightening these up to make sure that it doesn't vibrate loose. All the seals that have gone in there, they're the ones that are going to do the sealing. Um, again, you can check for leaks afterwards and if there is a, a leak there, just tighten it up a little bit. But don't go too mad with it because it is only plastic at the end of the day. Um, and I think these are quite easy to damage. So I've done that by hand, just for the sheer hell of it. Let's see how that compares. I'm using a dodgy um, sort of, uh, what's that, quarter inch to three quarter inch adapter. Cheap torque wrench, what could possibly go wrong? So yeah, you can see there's still a little bit to go on that. Um, and that's still not up to talk by the way but I'm just going to prove a point that when we style it up I, don't, I really don't think there'll be any leaks on this um, okay next we'll put the oil in these take Castrol Edge um, and make sure you find the right one so this is 530 that's what this engine takes on the back of these it shows um, that it's got the right vitamins or whatever especially designed for this type of engine um, so make sure it has got the VW in there Castrol do do the same container the same um, rating um, and it will be for a load of other different <coughs> models let's see how much of this we could get in without spilling any As I was saying, we've got about half a litre left in the can. We're going to let that settle down the engine. Again, giving that another clean up. Close that off for the minute. Before we put uh, put the car back on its wheels, we're just going to check, see what the oil level is. <coughs> So that does take the full four litres. Yep. So now we're going to move on to replacing the fuel filter on this. Um, we're using T20 torque socket. Um, these are not very tight. As it actually has the what you should tighten them up to on here, which is plus or minus five. Well, plus or minus one five newton meters so either four or six so first of all I'm just gonna loosen these off um, these are these are actually self priming um, they so you don't need uh, a special tool to prime the, the fuel up um, just turn the ignition on and off for a couple of times and that's good enough <coughs> So they're all loose. One of these days guys, we're going to make Sam talk in one of these videos instead of making funny grunting noises. <laughs> no, I don't think. Right. So that's loose. It'd be a little bit stuck down, so just give it a slight tug. And up it comes. All right. Again, tissue at the ready. Diesel doesn't. I don't think diesel hurts paintwork too much. It's actually pretty good um, cleaner. But if you've uh, squirted it around everywhere like I have, you'll have the smell in the cabin for a couple of days afterwards. What I'll probably do is get some brake cleaner and give it a spray down when, when we're uh, sort of finishing up. So have your oil catch tray ready. Um, just let that drain out a little bit. 
this if I remember right it was a bit of a pain to pick out oh, oh there you go proven wrong so that's all you do is just pick up the fuel filter let it drain in there a little bit and if you can have a bit of tissue ready and simply make a mess everywhere and then bring it across as I said before there's not loads in there there's a couple of little bits in there I mean I'd like to think that English or British fuel stations are pretty clean but I suppose it's the the small stuff that you don't see that's probably in between the pleats that you can't see with the naked eye but anyway I'm going to change it so so um, there's a part number for the fuel filter for this particular one um, on eBay there's a little tip there's a new one by the way don't go by the registration number because it I think it gives you the wrong one um, but this is the CFFB engine um, and this is the type of filter it takes you could probably drain that out if you like there's hardly anything in there. there's a couple of little spots just simply place that back in make sure it's lined up okay place the um, the top back part of it down ensuring that the middle uh, inlet Sorry. goes into the middle there and then we can start putting the the little bolts back in and there we are that's the fuel filter done Let's have a bit of a... before we do go starting it and uh, sort of trying to run the engine up and get it round everywhere we're just going to put this little bracket back on before I forget about it. And these two pipes here, you can see there's a little bit of a ridge. They're designed to sit in there like that. Again, as I said before, we're just going to nip this. It's not really doing an awful lot, just uh, it's only holding that bracket on with that um, little uh, pressure sensor or solenoid. It's going to be a solenoid, isn't it? It's only a two wire device. Okay, so what we do, what, what, what you would like to do is turn your ignition on. Um, see where your oil uh, pressure indicator is which uh, this doesn't have one so that's useful um, we'll okay that instead okay that and then we'll give it a start now it took a little while there because um, we changed the uh, fuel filter um, we're getting no lights coming on for um, low oil or anything like that See, running okay. This one hasn't had the um, the emissions fix, so it only revs to two and a half thousand RPM. Just give it a couple of rev ups. It, it it's not really necessary to be honest, but make sure the oil. Or I'm just doing that to make sure the oil is getting round, um, and then we can turn it off again. And now what we'll do, we'll get this back on all four wheels. Um, we'll put the under tray back on, we'll check for leaks. Not necessarily in that order. Right, so as we've just ran the engine, we're just gonna have a quick check, make sure there's no um, fuel leaks around the fuel filter. There's no oil leaks around the oil filter, which there isn't. So um, we're about ready to put the under tray back on now. Um, and as I said before, I've got these new speed clips and uh, the new screws, I'm going to call them screws, um, for them. So we're going to replace, I'm just going to replace the ones that really need replacing really. Um, 
and probably put a dab of grease on these just to stop them from rusting over. To be fair, I mean, what's that? Seven, eight years old this year. So I suppose they last eight years. These were cheap enough. I'll try and leave a link to these. Although I got these was off eBay, I'll try and see if I can find some off of um, Amazon or somewhere like that. Um, so you guys can find them easy. Grease on it. So that's probably one of the worst ones. So really and truthfully, it's not too bad, I suppose. Look at that, they're not exactly the same. A lot got triple folded, whereas this one's just single. Anyway, so we're going to put this one in. We're going to put the um, that pointy bit that's going to face upwards. And we're just going to simply slide that into the plastic bit just up here. There we go, simple as that. That went in quite easy. But this is the one on the tray. As you can see, it's not even on there properly because I think I bodged it some time ago um, just to try and get it to, to kind of work, which inevitably it didn't. <laughs> so that could be thrown away. I'll just get some cloth and give that a bit of a clean. Seems like I'm obsessed with cleaning in this video, I eh? give that, and that's a bit of uh, <laughs> diesel from earlier. So again, um, just gonna, I'm gonna put the pointy bits, for lack of a better word, I'm gonna face them upwards. So I'm just gonna face them like this. I'll try and line that up as best I can with the hole. It's, this one's quite a bit tighter than what that other one is. There we go put that on there eventually. All right, let's get this bad boy back in. So the easiest thing that I've found in the past with putting this back in is by letting the back fall on the floor, line the two clips up, and then uh, allow that to go in. As you can see, that's locked in there a little bit. And then get one of your bolts ready, hold the back up, get it lined up with the hole and then uh, simply just put that in and then that will hold it up while you get the rest of the fittings in. So next we're going to tackle the um, air filter, uh, so we're going to use a T20 Torx bit and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight little bolts to undo or screws, I think they're, if I remember rightly, they're self tappers, which is odd. Oh no, they're captive, that's handy. 
because we ain't going to lose them. confident yet in doing your own car? Um, yeah, I think I could do the service. I've done the service on my land, but that's a bit easier though than the modern ones. Oh yeah, this is it. I mean, it's all, it's, it's all about what bloody tools you need, isn't it? That's mm. the thing. It's, oh, you need a T whatever for that. T something to fix. It's like not, not all cars can... Um, I think the more modern stuff is actually better <coughs> than the older stuff, to be honest. But what is it? Um, well, in terms of like uh, fuel filter change, yeah. um, like this is self priming. So whereas a lot of a lot of the old cars, they you had to prime. Yeah. You know, especially if the fuel pump got aired up. You know. Whoops. laid out engine for this. It's alright, isn't it? It's not too bad. Richard. <coughs> What's that he's been saying? Put your tools on the floor. <laughs> yes, uh, don't put them on the battery, although we're alright in this. Yeah. Right, there's our air filter. Actually, in all honesty, it doesn't look that bad, does it? Yeah. I did some um, I did read somewhere that these last something like 50,000 miles. I don't know how true that is. And apparently the reason why they can last for so long is purely because they, these modern cars on poor modern diesels really recirculate. Um, there's our new one. Uh, recirculate a lot of the exhaust emissions. Um, how true that is, I don't know. These are quite cheap, so I'm replacing it. as that, uh, we'll tighten all the little screws up, again don't need to go over tight with these, you've got a half, a real decent seal on, on there, so no need to crush it now, as I said before just tight enough to, um, so they don't come loose, and of course drop your tools down the engine bay as you're doing it. Because if you don't do that, something's bound, something bad's bound to happen. There's a little devil. Right. This doesn't lock in. That's why I keep dropping it. Uh, yeah, this particular extension's had a few flying lessons. It even went in the bin once, and then I realised I needed it. <laughs> so again, I'm just using that method of not using the handle, just, just use the, the head of the ratchet really. This is one of those um, non how, how do I explain it? Non ratchet in ratchets. <laughs> that really makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So, um, 
yeah, there's no clicking, so you can do the tiniest little bit of movement, you know, if you're in a real tight spot, and it's absolutely ideal for that. So you haven't got to wait for the next click like you have on a traditional one. Um, and it's kind of handy as well. So if you've got real loose bolts as they're being tightened up, um, it's less likely that um, the ratchet, the, the spring tension on the ratchet itself will um, undo the bolt as you're trying to go for that next click. It's so frustrating. It's not perfect, but it's, it's certainly better than your traditional ones. And the reason why I bought this was actually because on um, when I was on a restoration course, we had a, a guy from Halfords come uh, and he was telling us it, the guys had one of these in a in a vice um, and this was at another college and uh, they were really like hanging off the back of it and it actually slipped and he was like horrified that the thing slipped because um, he thought it was the mechanism inside and of course it wasn't what had actually happens the uh, the anvil for lack of a better word actually slipped in the vice and it had actually sort of started to round over the the anvil and, and he had the tool with us and showed us it um, which was handy because we put it in a vice ourselves and <laughs> hung off it just to prove it and I was I was really impressed with that because it's this this size is quite easy to like break and you know at the time I, I, I mean I think I paid about eight pound for this and you know I was it's been one of my better tool purposes let's put it that way it's not an advanced one so if you do break it, it they won't like replace it but I mean to be honest with you it's cheap enough to kind of buy and buy a couple of them really so just the same it's only in um, a quarter inch uh, right that's that replaced put the engine cover back on let's make it look pretty again eh if you line up generally the uh, the oil cap, the rest of it falls into place. Just give it a push down on all four corners where the little poppers are, and that's it. We're looking nice and sexy again. So I'm going to get a bit of paper towel. I'm going to check the oil level. As I said before, we get the last little, um, we get that last half a liter in there. You can see it's gone slightly black again, which is helpful because when it's dead clean. It's actually quite difficult to see. Uh, so yeah, we're just below half, so we get the rest of that in there. Um, in between the two gaps on these is a litre. Um, if you're the person that does quite a lot of short distances with these, um, these have a, a diesel particulate filter on them um, and as they block up it actually uses um, on this particular engine anyway it actually um, injects fuel on the uh, on the exhaust stroke and uh, and puts neat fuel down the exhaust pipe to, or essentially down the DPF filter and what that does is it burns all the um, all the soot that it's collected um, the trouble is if you do a lot of short distances and the car's trying to do a regen while the engine's cold, a lot of that fuel can seep past the pistons and go into the um, into the sump at the bottom. And what this can do is uh, you can actually it actually fills the sump up with um, a mixture of obviously engine oil and diesel. So if you have if your oil level has risen for whatever reason, it's best just just change it despite what the computer thingy says in there. Just change it and um, see it done. Because at the end of the day, it will be wat well, watered down with fuel, which is undesirable. So that's that done. I think we're finished under this engine bay now. So yeah, we're not quite up to the maximum mark, but that's good enough. Probably get a half a litre bottle and um, well a litre bottle and, and top it up the rest of the way that would be good for another 10,000 miles or another uh, 
another year at least anyway. Um, I only do about seven or 8,000 miles a year in this. So, um, but I generally use it more on long distances. Um, oh, as you can see, I, I've got other cars that I normally use um, for every, you know, well, for the shorter stuff, so. Anyway, um, I'm rambling now, so that's that bit done. On to the uh, pollen filter or cabin filter. Um, so I'm going to change the pollen filter or cabin filter. Um, I've gone for this man one purely because uh, I couldn't find a Bosch one available um, that's got activated charcoal in it. Um, the charcoal is just um, takes out some of the unpleasant smells that you can sometimes uh, en encounter while you're driving. Um, so you've got a, like a kick panel under here that you need to. They've got two thumbs. Two uh, thumb screws that you need to undo. See if we can get nice and close to you now. So there. Oh, that's it. So this bit pops out. That should do. So just pull this foamy stuff out. Set that on the floor. Right, and then you got two. This is probably one of the easiest things that you can change. There's two clips, if I remember rightly. Oh, if I can see what I'm doing, that is. Ah, there we go. Let me show you that again. So, this cover here, you got a, it just literally slides over towards the left hand side and then it drops. And then there's our old filter, doesn't matter if we break that on the way out. Ooh, make a right mess inside the car there. So, as you can see, they collect quite a lot of rubbish. Yeah, and this is a man one as well, I think. Yeah, it's the same model. <laughs> Got airflow, so they can only go in one way anyway. Did you see all that? Yeah. Right, so it's gonna want to push out. So you could put these little clip things in the little representative holes there. And again, pushing from the right hand side or from the left hand side to the right. You can see that clips in like that. There, and that's in. So that's the pollen filter done. Now I've just got to put all this uh, stuff back in, this sound deadening material. There we go. And what you want to make sure you do is, uh, these are your air holes just up here, which you can't see. I've got my fingers in them. That's for your passenger's uh, footwell sort of heating and ventilation. So put our thumb screws back in. Bit awkward, but uh, a lot easier than some things. Uh, where's the other screw go? There it is. Oh, 
and we're in. Okay. Is that tracking anymore? Oh. Ah. It would help if I actually touched things in in the right place, wouldn't it? Don't do what I do. Try and tuck it in under up here. Is that got any? Oh yeah, it has. We've got a bit of plastic to try and lip that under. We're done. One is using um, an OBD2 tool. Um, the second way, I'm going to try and remember how to do it myself, so bear with me. So, ignition's off, press and hold set, and then you see oil change service reset, are you sure? Um, so you've only got two options, OK and cancel, press OK, and it only resets the service. It, it doesn't actually uh, reset the inspection. Right, so we just had a quick look online to see how you reset the inspection. See if I really what I was keen on showing you guys how to do it um, without any specialist tools. So, what you do, press and hold the set button, turn on the ignition. It'll come up with oil change service, are you sure? Move down, cancel. Ignition off. Hazards on. Press and hold set. Ignition on. Reset inspection service, are you sure? Okay, service reset. Then you can turn the hazards off, or turn the ignition off. And now, when we turn the ignition on, we should go straight to door open. And if we go, if, if we now try and find our, oh damn it. Right, go back to settings. Let's see if we can find settings. There we go. So inspection, 20,100 miles, 365 days. Um, I'm going to do a quick video now on showing how we can reset this using um, some software called VCDS. You will need a proper Rostec cable to do this though. So um, I'll catch you guys in a minute. Um, if uh, if this is as far as you can go then thank you very much for watching and thanks for um, joining us uh, this far see you in the next one so we're plugged in to the obd2 port now which is located down the bottom there um, this is as i said before a rostec cable um, go to the rostec website um, i think on the buy section it, it gives you a list of distributors that they approve that you could buy from. This is, as I say, an official cable. 
I bought this in early 2014. Um, it was about, I think I paid 200, 250 quid at the time. Yeah, it's expensive, but um, you only need to look at a couple of fault codes <laughs> and it's kind of made your money back. So uh, this uses VCDS, so we'll go into that. Um, and because it's updated, uh, we have to test the connection um, and save that. So um, we could go to the service reminder reset interval. It helps to have your key on you and have the ignition on. try that again reset and it will connect to the relevant modules and it will do a reset which hopefully it's doing in the background there we go get a few flashes on various things um, and then it gives you a a list of everything that's um, that's been reset and also you can reset your um, fixed inspection or just your oil so uh, we go well that's uh, rest of the world or second service and later so we'll press on that uh, perform SRI We'll go through it again. I, I think it's already done it to be fair, but we'll go through it again. And because we done the um, reset using the buttons earlier, we can't really check either. Yeah, it's obviously already done it, hasn't it? So I'm not massively familiar with this stuff. Um, I just try and learn what I need to learn for the time. Um, you know, if I've got any fault lights that have come up, which I've not had on this car yet. Um, something that I like to do as well is I like to just perform a full auto scan um, and just check because although I've never had the engine management light on on here there still could be some faults or um, some minor faults that doesn't feel that it's necessary to warn you about but um, this is uh, this is of course a part of the inspection as to what the guys would do um, back at the VW garage anyway so they would probably turn around and say if um, I don't know if you've got a sensor that's on its way out or is not giving a quite a good enough reading for what the car's expecting but it's not serious enough to um, actually bring a fault up if that makes sense uh, so we'll let it run through this um, when it's finished uh, that we'll, we'll come back to you so um, we've just done a full scan there um, and as you can see we've got no errors on there which is good um, which isn't bad for a seven year old car one that's done 57,000 miles so um, yeah quite happy with that so anyway um, hopefully for those of you that um, you know probably a little bit new to this sort of stuff hopefully this has given you an idea of how you know not to be too uh, what's the right word intimidated by these newer modern cars in some respects some things can be a little bit easier the most pain in the backside thing really for for any for anyone is is the resets <coughs> um, obviously with the car such as the Cavaliers that I've got there's no service indicator that you have to worry about um, one thing I'd like to do though um, I do actually fill out the service book um, and I actually write, uh, I'll show you last year's for example, uh, and I actually write self-service in there, um, just you know, so people can see what I've done exactly and, and it's also a good reminder for yourself uh, when you've done things. Uh, although that was 2020 so I would have done one last year so yeah again self-service uh, and I tick exactly what I've done as well um, 
so yeah hopefully uh, hopefully that's taught you everything or given you the confidence to do your own servicing um, good luck with it and thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again in another video